2023 marks the 75th anniversary of the Omega Seamaster, and today I'm here to tell you about one that's my favorite and probably one of the best references made by Omega in those last 75 years. So before we get into the reasons why I love this watch, I'm first gonna tell you a little bit about the history of it. Not too much though, because Omega might have some nice stuff planned for us later this year, as it is the 75th anniversary. So where does the Seamaster come from? Well, when we look back at 1948, we see a general used wristwatch with a little bit of water resistance. We have to fast forward to 1957 to see the first Seamaster that looks like an actual dive watch as we know them today, with a rotating bezel and much more water resistance. The 1957 model was resistant to 200 meters, although it was called the Seamaster 300. Later on, 10 years, in 1967, we saw the first introduction of a military Seamaster, as the watch was actually issued to members of the Royal British Army's Special Forces, the SAS, so you know the watch could really stand up to the toughest beating, and it did so on a NATO strap. We then jump forward to 1993 in tracing the lineage of the 2254, and there we find the 2541.80.00. That's the first 300M reference as worn by Pierce Brosnan in 1995's GoldenEye, his first outing on the silver screen as James Bond. Which goes to show that James Bond was never too much of a snob as he didn't mind wearing a quartz watch, at least for a little while, before the automatic reference was introduced a little bit later on in the 90s. Seven years later, in the early 2000s, the reference 2254 was first introduced. Now this reference very early on had the nickname the Peter Blake, and this is because of the New Zealand-born yachtsman Peter Blake, who was featured in a lot of Omega's advertisements for these watches, including several other references as well as the chronograph version. Now Peter Blake, whose passion for the Seamaster was undeniable, he even named his yacht the Seamaster, sadly passed away in a shootout with pirates on the Amazon River during a conservation mission in 2001, but his name lives on within this watch. Now, sadly, the 2254 never actually made it onto Bond's wrist, though Pierce Brosnan did wear it in some Omega print ads in the early 2000s. I think it would have been a perfect Bond watch if Bond didn't prefer the blue one with the skeletonized hands, as this one references the one worn by the British military special service agents and would have perhaps made a little bit more sense for a secret agent to be wearing. Now, I've talked to you a little bit about the heritage, which is a big part of the reason why I love this watch. But now I want to talk a little bit more about what makes it great on my wrist. As an avid diver who tries to get underwater at least a couple times a year, this is the perfect tool for the job. It's water resistant to 300 meters, it's got a unidirectional rotating bezel, and to me, this model from the early 2000s just has a much more purposeful tool-like look to it. Everything is brushed, the aluminum bezel insert is a lot less shiny than the modern day ceramic versions, and I obviously love the classic wave dial. Though I don't think I'm gonna be putting the helium escape valve to use anytime soon, it's still good to know that your watch can really take everything that you throw at it. Let's talk a little bit about the dimensions. Now this watch has a 41 millimeter diameter, which is perfect on my six and a half inch wrist. I also love how slim it is. That's actually a key selling point for me. The fact that this watch is just 11.8 millimeters thick. This is in part thanks to the fact that it uses a simple uh, Omega caliber 1120, which is an ETA based caliber, uh, instead of the modern day coaxial versions, which are a little bit thicker and a little bit chunkier and also 42 millimeters in diameter. So they're just a bit too big for comfort on my wrist. Now, the typically military sword hands featured on this watch are definitely a callback to the 1967 Seamaster 300 used by the SAS. Obviously, these have been featured in other watches like CWCs, uh, Rolex obviously famously had a mil sub, but I like that this is one of the watches where you can still get those sword hands in a rather affordable watch with a lot of credibility and heritage to it. I also love the oversized numerals on the bezel. I think that they're very of the time, uh, as well as the very organic lines of the case. Now, the bracelet is something else that I should mention because it's not really the classic Seamaster bracelet introduced in 1993. The 2254 has always featured a bracelet that more closely resembles that that was featured on the previous generation of uh, Speedmaster. Now, the case back is also nice because it calls back to the wave pattern on the dial, uh, and it also features the famous Omega Sea Monster, the hippocampus, engraved very nicely in the center. Now, I said that the movement is actually an ETA based caliber that Omega had in the early 2000s, but it's a fantastic movement in its own right. 
It's chronometer certified, and I really enjoy seeing the seconds hand tick past the 12 o'clock marker as the time changes on my laptop or on my phone. So you know it's always on time. Now that marker at 12 o'clock, which Watch Gringa referenced my referencing to it as a slice of Loom pizza, is also quite a feature of this watch. And the Loom in general is fantastic. I walk in from the street into my house where it's a little bit darker and it just blasts away like nothing else. I often wear the watch on the bracelet, which is nice and comfortable and uh, actually allows you to enjoy the slimness of the case. But every now and then, of course, I'm tempted to put it on a NATO strap, which thanks to its slimness also wears fantastically. Now, I bought this watch to mark a very special occasion, which was my 30th birthday earlier this year. The Seamaster 300M and I were both born in 93. And so I thought it would be a perfect way to mark the occasion and a perfect watch for me. It's a watch that I discovered in my early days of going down the watch rabbit hole in the German forums, where people referred to it as the Schwerdi, because Schwert in German means sword, referring to the sword hands. And it's one that I always had in the back of my mind as a watch that I would love to own. And now that I've had it, it's been a honeymoon that's lasted at this point five months. So in the Seamaster 2254, we have a watch with great heritage, great history, and for me, a personal connection. So I couldn't think of a better watch to become a bit of a signature for myself and one that I absolutely enjoy and recommend to anybody who's looking for a fantastic dive watch. Though no longer as affordable as they once were, these watches are still widely available for around 3,000 euros and represent a lot of value for that price. So if you're looking for a fantastic dive watch and nothing in the current Omega collection quite cuts it for you, you could always look at the Neo Vintage options, including the 2254, which is still widely available today. Now, I've talked about this watch saying that it's one of the best Seamaster references ever made. That's my opinion, but I'd love to hear yours. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.